What do directors Bennett Miller, Terry Zwiggle, and Ari Feldman all have in common? They're all very different filmmakers stylistically. Before making feature-length narrative films, they were documentarians. Not only were they docus the breakout films that gave them their name in the industry, but even more interestingly, how their backgrounds in non-fiction filmmaking influenced how they made films in the future. But no filmmaker's influence from the documentary genre was ever more apparent in his body of work than that of director William Friedkin. William Friedkin is without a doubt one of the most uncompromising directors of all time, whose run of films in the 70s including The French Connection, The Exorcist and Sorcerer were some of the best and most visually realized films of the decade. Before he was taken the mainstream by storm however, Freakin's breakout film was the 50 minute documentary short, The People vs Paul Crump, a film about a man on death row who Freakin believed to be innocent. The success of the film got Crump off death row, and the attention the film received gave Freakin his career. On his fourth feature, The French Connection, Freakin would bring over his lessons from docu filmmaking, which he realized he could do after watching the 1969 film Z by Costa Gavrids, who used a similar grounded technique to his film. This adopted style Freakin would call induced documentary, which is exactly what it sounds like, giving the look and feel of a documentary to make the narrator's world feel more grounded and real. Aesthetically, the influences are obvious. The handheld, almost improvisational look of the film was achieved by only blocking out scenes with the actors and not informing the camera operators where the characters would move in a scene. With the camera being unable to predict where the actors would go, it gives the film the feel of a fly-on-the-wall style of documentary. But not only did he want his films to look more grounded in reality, but to embody them in a lived-in world. In an effort to make his films feel more realistic, there is a significant amount of physical presence in his movies. Whether it be filming on a real location the movie is set, making your actors do their own stunts, or filming a big action set piece for real. Sorcerer famously filmed in South America, with in some cases, the actors themselves performing their dangerous stunts in the trucks. And while the stunts are impressive, with the possibility of real danger increasing the tension, it's not what makes the film real. It's the atmosphere of the overwhelming physicality of the luscious jungle that gives the film such an authentic feel. If we compare this to the equally great The Wages of Fear that Sorcerer is based on, it's missing the same sense of physical tangibility that Freakin brings to the film. This tangibility can be seen throughout the French Connection and To Live and Die in LA, which filmed mostly without professional extras, and in the case of the latter, used real prisoners on location for background characters. Aesthetics weren't the only thing that documentary influenced for Friedkin. It also influenced the way he approached filmmaking. These are less obvious, and have been in Friedkin's work even before The French Connection. In some of his older films, Friedkin will frequently strip down a scene stylistically to its bare minimum of necessity. The more humanistic and sympathetic Friedkin gets with his characters, much like his debut doco, the less concerned with stylization he is, instead focusing purely on character. 1970's The Boys in the Band starts off highly stylized and energetic, with lots of color, energy and movement from both the characters and the camera. But as the film becomes more emotionally charged towards the climax, these flourishes disappear, leaving us only with the characters. Much like The People vs Paul Crump, that is filled with technical style of handheld recreations, the most emotive part of the film is a single, stationary shot of Crump pleading directly into the camera. If he hasn't completely destroyed everything that uh, you've been taught that God believes that God stands for, and this will make you a little cynical, and this will make you a fight to uh, sustain a belief in mankind, a little harder, a belief in God, a little more hard. No flourishes, just raw emotion. Both scenes juxtaposed with the flashiness of the rest of the film makes the scenes all the more powerful. Freakin's experience in documentary also influenced how he presented his characters on film. Looking at another director, Bennett Miller, a man who had a similar start in filmmaking, his films are intensely character-focused studies that have been criticized for being cold and distant. This distance is a result of his documentary roots. By keeping the audience distant to the characters, it allows for an extremely objective point of view and allowing the audience to purely observe the characters' actions with little bias. Freakin is similar to his approach. Whilst we do get glimpses into the characters' mindsets, Freakin's distance also allows for his characters not to be judged, no matter how despicable they and their actions are. But if there was one aspect of Freakin's filmmaking that really encapsulates his approach to the form, it's the number of takes he does for a scene. Especially in his later films, 
Frequent would usually only employ a second take if there was a technical issue. There were almost no second takes for performances. Frequent's filmmaking for these movies are nearly journalistic in nature. A desire to capture an honest moment in time that can't be recreated. Frequent's aim in his films is to be as close as life as possible. Not just for the sake of a unique aesthetic, but to be able to impartially explore the darker side of humanity. All of Freakin's characters to a fine line between good and evil, right and wrong, and what makes him a hero or a villain. Freakin's beginnings in documentary is what gave him the desire to explore human morality and what strengthened his belief that our deepest desires and darkest fears aren't embedded in fantasy, but right around the corner of our own real world. Documentary has not only made William Freakin both a more curious and sensitive filmmaker, but a director who understands the shortcomings of humanity and is willing to show it off for both our entertainment and as a cautionary tale of what we can all succumb to.